for names on a few of them. And particularly, we're looking for people to write their memories of when they visited, the, seen the Queen or been somewhere where she is. Whatever it is, um, we'd love your memory of it. And if you've got some artifacts that we could use for an exhibition, then we would, they'd be gratefully received too. But have a look at the back. And uh, if you don't understand anything about the Queen's Jubilee weekend, have a word with me afterwards. So I'm going to hand over to the Huxter family who are leading our service this morning. But welcome, everybody. Thank you, Jennifer. And may I add a warm welcome to anyone who's here for the first time or anyone who hasn't been for a long time because we love to see old friends and new. And at Church Family Worship this morning, we're continuing with our theme of questions. And today, Jennifer will be talking to us about the question, whom are you seeking? Which Jesus asks of Mary after his resurrection. Of course, it's only been two weeks since Easter Sunday. So the resurrection is still very much in our minds and what that means to us as Christians. Now, I know this isn't the type of music that we normally have, but Jennifer, because she's down with the kids, has found a rap which is about this actual scene in the garden in Jerusalem. And the words are going to appear on the screen, and some of the Next Plus group are going to come up and lead us. So they're going to read through the verse, and then we're going to join in with the chorus, I think. Is that right? Good. Okay. Bear with us. <coughs> Mary was sad. Things seemed bad. Jesus was the best friend she'd ever had. She went to the tomb where his dead body lay. His body wasn't there. It had gone away. She was crying and weeping when the angels came. She was crying and weeping. Someone called her name. It was Jesus, and he said, it'll be okay. Then Mary ran to tell what she'd heard him say. And everyone join in this bit. It's okay, I'm here, I'm alive forevermore. Everybody chill out, be afraid no more. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Ella Thank you, Jay-Z and Beyonce. And now to some more traditional music. Our first song this morning is His Mercy Is More. The chorus of this song reminds us that no matter what we've done, and what we've said, no matter what our sins, God's mercy covers them. And please stand if you're able to sing. What love could remember, no wrongs we have done. Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not as some. Run into the sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Patience could wait as we constantly roam. What Father so tender is calling us home? He welcomes the weakest, the vilest, the poor. Our sins, they are many, His mercy is more. Praise the Lord. Yeah. 
riches of kindness he lavished on us. His blood was the payment, his life was the cost. We stood neath the debt we could never afford. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger than darkness, new every morn. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more. Stronger now to a time of confession. The word should appear on the screen, I think. Yes. <laughs> so uh, Rachel and I will say the words, um, and then the whole congregation will all join in the words in bold. Like Mary at the empty tomb, we fail to grasp the wonder of your presence. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Like the disciples behind locked doors, we are afraid to be seen as your followers. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Like Thomas in the upper room, we are slow to believe. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God, who sent his Son into the world to save sinners, bring us his pardon and peace, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now over to Ed, who has an activity. Good morning. Lovely to see you all. Um, hopefully my mum has been handing out some lovely flowers for you that we'll be making this morning. Uh, if you haven't got one, give, give mum a wave and you can come grab one now. I'm just going to go back up and put on a tutorial video so that you can all see it. So any little ones that can't see the screen, now's the prime time to come look at the screen. I'll go play the video. We don't have to do it as quick as them. Um, and then we can just um, yeah make some flowers together because it's all to do with um, the... It's all to do about the resurrection and celebrating that, and uh, it'd just be nice for something for you to take home. So I've got a demonstration. If we're, that's what we're going to aim for. So I'll just play the instructional video, and then um, we'll, we'll have a little go together. Let's make some flowers. This is what you'll need, a straw or pipe cleaner, a cut out hand and a pencil. Peel off the backing, stick your straw on top of it, take off the other backing, Roll your, the hand around the straw, but so it's tight at the bottom and looser at the top. You 
use a pencil to curl the tips of the fingers. And there you have it, you should have a flower. Wonderful. So big thanks to the Whitlocks for putting that video together. That's our end product. So hopefully you're getting on all right with that. So it was the sticky pads, you wrap it loosely around the bottom and then you use your pencil to uh, gently fold the petals. Anyone want to wave theirs who's made them? Oh, brilliant, lovely. So we've got some pipe cleaners and some saws. That's wonderful. Well done. So yeah, feel free to tink tinker away with your lovely, your lovely Easter flowers and um, yeah, enjoy the rest of the service. So yeah, although Connie's not here, a big thank you to Connie for making that video. And now you all have beautiful flowers to look at throughout the rest of the service. Our next song this morning is He Has Risen. He has risen, he is alive. And he appeared to his disciples. And because he is alive, our hope is not in vain.
going to pray together. If you agree with what we say, at the end, please join in with an Amen. So let us pray. We pray for everyone in Ukraine, for those who want to leave but cannot, and for those who have stayed to defend their country. As hard as it is for us to understand why bad things happen, we know that your will will be done on earth in your timing. We give thanks for the Queen, for her steadfast faith in you, and for her loyal dedication to serving this country. Please give her strength and freedom from illness to enjoy the celebrations for her Platinum Jubilee. We pray for all those who are struggling with illness, for the people known to us in our church family, for any friends or family that we know personally, and for those who are being treated now in our local hospitals please give the medical staff knowledge and compassion to do the very best for those in their care. And we pray for teachers and pupils who are facing upcoming exams, from SATs to GCSEs, A-levels and university exams. Please give them reassurance to know that our lives in you are not an exam and that you don't mark us on how well we understand algebra or subordinate clauses. We are all fearfully and wonderfully made with all sorts of different talents and skills. And we celebrate our uniqueness and how much we are all loved by you. In your name, Lord. Amen. Our Bible reading today is taken from the book of John, chapter 20 and verses 11 to 18. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb, and as she wept, she stooped to look in the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had lain, one at the head and one at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I don't know where they have laid him. Having said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you seeking? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Aramaic, Rabbani, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not cling to me, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my father and your father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord, and that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So first of all, before I speak a prayer, Lord God, we thank you for raising Jesus from the dead. Speak to us now as we continue to think about Mary meeting Jesus in the garden. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, as uh, Kirsty said earlier, we're beginning our, uh, continuing our theme of uh, questions this morning. And these questions were asked in a garden 
And that is why we've made flowers this morning, because flowers make us think of gardens. You don't often find a garden that hasn't got flowers in. And at this time of the year, they're particularly uh, lovely as you look around and they start to come out. But the questions that we heard were, why are you weeping, asked the angel, and Jesus asked that as well. And who are you seeking, asked Jesus. But I want to begin this morning in another garden. And so I want you, first of all, to have a look at your flowers, um, because they will make you think about a garden. And so we're going to have a garden on the screen, I hope. And... Um, they will help you to think about my first garden. And this garden is when God created the world. And it's from a, a book that we've been using um, with Experience Easter with the children uh, from St. Michael's and from John Ray next week. And uh, the picture is from this book. And it was a wonderful garden. And in this garden there was nothing bad and no one was sad. And best of all, God was in this garden, and God and the people were there together. And the people in the garden did not want God to be in charge of them. They wanted to do what they liked without God. They did not want to do what God said, and they did not do what God said. And so they could not stay in the garden. And God said they have to leave the garden and they have to stay outside. So have a look at your flowers and think of this very first garden ever where the people that God had made turned their backs on him and so they had to leave this wonderful garden where there was nothing bad and no one was sad. And they had to go into the world where lots of things are bad and lots of things are sad. But you see, God didn't want the world to be like this. He wanted all of us, the world, to be friends with him. He wanted to be in charge of our lives because he made us and he knows what is best for us. And so God always had a plan that this could happen and that we could become his friends just like in that very first garden when God created the world. Now another garden will show us this plan. So we'll go to my second garden, and I'm sure that in this garden there were flowers too. And the garden on the screen you'll see is the Garden of Gethsemane. And at Easter Experience, this is the Garden of Gethsemane where the children come, just here. And last week Stephen was sitting there telling the children from St. Michael's School all about the Garden of Gethsemane. And this garden is where Jesus went, which you know, before he went to the cross to die. And we can see that he's praying and he's preparing to take all of our sin on himself. And that means all the bad things that we've done, all the bad things that we will do, and all the sad things in the world will be able to be put right. So look at your flowers again, or look at somebody else's if you haven't made one, and the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus was prepared to die on the cross for every one of us so that all those bad things can be forgiven and we can be friends with God just like in that very first garden. And all we have to do is thank Jesus for dying for us and ask him to forgive us. Now look at your flowers again, and we come to our third garden. This is a bit longer. And let's see what happens in this garden, because again, Jesus is in this garden, God in the first garden, Jesus in Gethsemane, and now Jesus is in this garden. And we're reminded of what happened on that very first Easter day. God raised Jesus from the dead. At Smash Club and a church on Easter Sunday, uh, we use the words, he is risen, he is risen indeed, hallelujah. It's one of the great facts of the Christian faith. And we heard what happened in this garden in our rap, and we heard of it in our Bible reading. And so firstly, I want us to see that Mary 
enters the garden. And Mary was sad, and things seem bad. And Mary is so sad, and four times at least in our reading, it says that she was really crying. She's so unhappy, she doesn't know where Jesus has gone. And think of the unhappiest time that you've ever had, or the unhappiest that you've ever been, and that's what it was like for Mary. And she looks into the tomb, and she expects to find Jesus' body there, but there's two angels. And in the space where you would expect Jesus' body to be, it's just empty. And Mary thinks, well, maybe somebody has stolen Jesus away, stolen his body. And Mary is totally fixed on just finding Jesus, just looking for Jesus. And the angels give her a little clue. They say, well, why are you crying? And they wonder why she's crying so much. Because the angels know that God has raised Jesus from the dead, that Jesus is alive. And so they wonder, well, why is she crying? Why is she looking for Jesus here? Because he's alive. Jesus is actually alive. But Mary doesn't get it yet. She says, they've taken away my Lord. I don't know where they've laid him. I don't know where he is. And Mary's doing a really good thing. She's looking for Jesus. She wants to find him. She wants to know what is happening. And like us, we can be sad. We can be unhappy. We can wonder where Jesus is. But it's always a good thing to be looking for Jesus. So have a look at your flowers again, or somebody else's flowers. And remember, Mary enters the garden. She's sad, she's looking for Jesus. And all she's got in her mind is that she wants to find where Jesus is. Now on my next slide, we see that Mary, she's entered the garden. Now she encounters Jesus. She turns around from speaking to the angels, maybe to look if she can see Jesus anywhere or where he might be. But all she can see is the gardener tending the flowers. And the gardener asks her more questions. The same questions again, why are you weeping? Who are you seeking? All Mary wants is Jesus. Just tell me where Jesus is. And then the gardener said her name, simply Mary. And she realized immediately with no doubts that this was the very person that she was looking for, but not a body, but a person who was alive and real and could call out to her, it was Jesus himself. And Jesus knew Mary from the time uh, before he died. She was a friend of Jesus, and so he would know her name. But we know from the Bible, because John's Gospels told us earlier, that um, Jesus said he's the good shepherd and he knows his sheep by name, and they recognize his voice. Mary is one of Jesus' sheep, one of his followers. She recognized the voice of Jesus, and he knew her name. And Mary simply said to Jesus, Rabboni, or master, or teacher. And she's really saying, you're my God, my Lord, my teacher, my King. You're Jesus, you're everything I need, and you are alive. And it's the same for us here this morning. However young we are, however old we are, if we are followers of Jesus, he knows our name, and we are able to recognize his voice. It's one of the amazing things of being a follower of Jesus. He says to us, whatever our name might be, Jennifer, Kirsty, Rachel, Leah, and we can too can respond with Master, Rabboni, Teacher, you're my Lord, you're my God, you're my King. You are everything I need. You've done everything for me. So have a look at your flowers. And remember that in this garden, Mary, it's a posh word, encountered, met Jesus. She knows for sure that he's alive. She recognized his voice as he called to her. And we too can know Jesus. We can find Jesus. We can know that he's alive, he knows our name, yours and mine, and we can respond, Master, Teacher, Rabboni, King, Lord, Jesus, you are everything.
And then, my last heading, Mary exits the garden. She goes out of the garden. And Mary ran to tell what she'd heard Jesus say. She exits the garden with a message for the disciples. And we can read this message in the Bible, so it's for us as well. I have seen the Lord. He is alive, and he'll soon be going back to God his Father to reign in heaven, King and Lord of the world. Mary's rejoicing, she's happy, she's confident, she's convinced, she knows that Jesus is alive. He's her master, her teacher, her Lord. And it's good news that she has to take to the disciples. And it's good news for us today. It's good news that we have to take out into our world. And in our wrath, it was, it's okay, I'm here, I'm alive forevermore. And perhaps we'll have a go at the wrath before the end, and you can memorize those words. And then, my last uh, slide, we've come on a journey this morning from that very first garden. And if you follow the arrows from that garden where there was nothing bad, there was nothing sad, but the people had to leave the garden because of their sin. Follow the arrows to see God's plan. Jesus died on the cross to take my sin. God brought Jesus back to life so that we can be friends with God today and one day live in his wonderful garden, heaven forever. And heaven, and that's the last picture in this book, and it will come on the screen, I think. Heaven is the the full circle we've come from the garden that god created to the garden of gethsemane to the garden where jesus rose from the dead after he died and eventually the promise is that if we know jesus as our lord and master that one day we will come full circle and we will be in heaven and we're all invited because of jesus so can you make sure that you've accepted the invitation? So just a moment of quiet, and then I'm going to ask Ed to do something a bit harder, I think. So we'll have a prayer, quiet prayer, and I'm going to ask Ed if we can have a go at the rap just before we sing our last song. Lord God, we thank you that you raised Jesus from the dead, we thank you for the gardens that we've thought about this morning and we pray that you will help us as we look at our flowers to remember the circle that we saw from the garden that you created right through to that wonderful place where we can go if we know, love and trust you in heaven. So we thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Now some people... Um, actually came after the rap and I think they'd like to do it so can you do it again well, you did it so well but it's a shame not to um, let everybody have a chance to join you Mary was sad things seemed bad Jesus was the best friend she'd ever had she went to the tomb where his dead body lay. His body wasn't there, it had gone away. She was crying and weeping when the angels came. She was crying and weeping, someone called her name. It was Jesus and he said, it'll be okay. Then Mary ran to tell what she'd heard him say. It's okay, I'm here. I'm alive forevermore. Everybody chill out, be afraid no more. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> Three, two, one. Mary was sad. Things seemed bad. Jesus was the best friend she'd ever had. She went to the tomb where his dead body lay. His body wasn't there, it had gone away. She was crying and weeping when the angels came. She was crying and weeping, someone called her name. It was Jesus, and he said, It'll be okay. Then Mary ran to tell what she'd heard him say. It's okay, I'm here. I'm alive forevermore. Everybody chill out. Be afraid no more. 
So thank you, everybody, and take your flowers home. And we still have some flowers left if you want to take one to make and to remember what we've heard about this morning. Thank you. You can go home and wrap for the rest of the day now. Our final song today is The Greatest Day in History. Through Jesus' death and resurrection, he has washed our sins away, and we are changed, and that makes for a really, really happy day. day in history death is beaten you have rescued me sing it out Jesus is alive the empty cross the empty grave life eternal you have won the day celebrate Jesus is alive is alive great song to end the service on. I hope Jennifer's talk has given you something to think about and of course you get to take your flowers home. I'll close the service now with a prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you that we could come together this morning in this place to worship you and put you first in our lives. We pray that as we go out from this building to spend time with family or friends, we show the love of Jesus to those that we meet. 
and to remember that whatever we are seeking, the answer will be found in you. Amen. Now, the window is open, so I take it from that that there will be refreshments um, after the service. Woohoo! <laughs> it's a bit hit and miss at the moment, so you never know until you actually see the window open. Um, but please, um, please do stay. Um, Okay, see Janet if you want to um, do the be on the refreshment rotor. It really isn't too onerous, and if you get a lot of people, it means that you won't have to do it very often at all. Um, so, yeah, brilliant. Um, yeah, please stay, please chat, um, have a drink, um, and enjoy um, being with each other. Uh, good morning. <laughs>